the struggle for my children and myself as well. You know, we had to do a lot of preparing for that. Um, the city of Cleveland has failed me and many more. Um, let's talk about how I need my white privileged Americans to stand and unify with us. Um, I believe that's the only way change will occur. Also, um, also, um, all of us standing together and unifying, um, that would set an example for the government to say, listen, look, we're not going to take this anymore, you know? You can't just keep killing unarmed Americans, period. You just can't do it. You cannot use deadly force as a first result. They were five... <laughs> they were five feet away from my son when my son was shot in the chest. And your law enforcement, you were supposed to assess the situation and approach approach it with the you know right probable um, cause or whatever you know what I'm saying you supposed to analyze it you know to ride up on my son and scare him half to death and then I don't have a son anymore and it's just like it's okay to just go on with your life in America no it's not you can see clearly that Tamir was just playing in the park that day you know just playing he wasn't bothering anybody wasn't nobody scared it was a fully function recreation center that day you have people getting on and off the rapid station walking through the park with their groceries you had a mailman there you have um kids actually running in and out the side of the wreck so he could have never been a threat to anybody because everybody knows who i am over there all they had to do was call me all they had to do was call me so um It has been a struggle for my family. I have Tajay, which is 16 now. I have Tavon, which is 17, soon to be 18. And I have Tashiana, which is 21. Um, it's a struggle to, um, you know, just be strong and process this whole thing. You know, I, I'm my children rock. And, you know, I, I have to remain standing no matter what. America has a lot to um, have a lot of work to do. Let me just say that, and um, I need to say that racism is a disease. You are not born with racism; you are taught racism. And um, the killing part about it, we're still looking for a cure for racism. Let's try to let's try to look for a cure for racism as we looking for cures for other um, diseases, because that is a disease. I'm here today to be honored on behalf of my son and acknowledge the. Kent State students as well as the Jackson State students. Um, it's just a shame. They're supposed to be able to exercise their First Amendment rights. I mean, I don't. at this point, I'm not understanding. What do we have the First Amendment rights for if we can't exercise them? And who is the law enforcement to, to kind of like knock that down or let, let alone put their hands on you. You know, we're here to ex exercise our First Amendment rights. I think we should be able to do that. I am, um, in my journey, in my process of um, transforming, um, definitely um, 
starting with the healing process and um, just giving back to my community, period. I'm establishing the Tamir Rice Foundation, which will um, implement, thank you, which will implement a mentoring program and an art program and also um, scholarships, four to six year scholarships for students to um, conquer their dreams. I believe in, um, thank you. I'm still structuring it though, but that's that's what I, my vision is, four to six year scholarships for, you know, students that's um, qualified and applied for it that could um, fulfill your dreams, you know? You know, you guys are our future and, you know, setting good examples you know, for you guys, you guys will set good examples for you kid, y'all kids when y'all have kids. So, we need a leader of great um, people to lead this nation. You know, at this point, um, black, white, Puerto Rican, Hispanic, whatever it is, you know, I'm all for it. My son had children of all nationalities that he played with. He went to a school that was very diverse with Muslim children. Asian children, Arabic children, white and black children, and for them children to come up to me and say, oh, I'm sorry for your loss, it crushed me. I mean, little, little kids, even the Tamir school was from K through 8. So you're talking about the kindergartens all the way up to the 8th graders coming up to me. So, oh, I'm so sorry for your loss. That's so devastating. And I just embrace it. You know, I just embrace it. I really need for white America, my white privileged Americans, this does apply to you too. I just seen an episode where the, um, where the white boy attacked the police, but the police, um, he couldn't do nothing but, you know, shoot him. He attacked him. So that's an example of being privileged and thinking it don't apply to you. It do apply to you. I need you guys to stand with us all and unify um, unity and humanity at this point. <laughs> Thank you. I have worked with some great organizations, uh, Freedom First, Greg Greer out of Chicago, Black Lives Matter, um, L. Hearns, and you know, they just have been embracing me and teaching me and I'm learning. Once again, I was just thrown into this. I was cooking lasagna for my children when all of this happened. So I'm just a mom at the end of the day, but also in honor of my son, I want to be able to change the laws and um, create some change across America for all of our people, period. And I can never be racism. Um, like I said, my children had all type of nationalities. And to this day, they still have all type of nationalities as friends and um, you know, you, you you're taught that you're not you know you're not born that. One thing I do want to say, a couple things I want to say is that um, please continue to support me in uh, my fight for justice for all. Um, hearing um, hearing the young lady, um, hearing the two ladies, China Baldwin and. Um, Jennifer Swartz. Swartz. Um, I didn't. I didn't. Re I didn't realize that. You know, we're still, we're still wanting justice for these four babies that was killed. Cause at the end of the day, they still somebody's baby. You know what I'm saying? And it's just, it was just blown. I was just blown away that <laughs> they haven't received justice yet. And I'm just, I just, I don't understand. I'm having a, I'm having a hard time understanding that. When you're talking about the National Guard shooting inside of a crowd of civilians, unarmed civilians, and some college students at that, America should be ashamed of itself. Period. Yeah. Also, when you have corrupt law enforcement in um, in particular cities across the state, they it's so corrupt. I mean, how in the world did Timothy Loman become a police officer when he failed the sheriff exam five times? And Frank Grimbeck, 
after beating up an African American woman in the city paying her out, how are you still an officer? I don't understand. So, you know, my job is to make them uncomfortable. I don't sugarcoat nothing. Um, I can't be bought and sold. <laughs> Um, I'm the real deal Holyfield, and uh, you know, <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. So it's just a shame. America has a lot of cleaning up to do, and whatever I can help them do, I'm here for them. I am waiting for the Department of Justice to see if they're going to give me an indictment for Timothy Loman. Maybe Frank ran back too, you know. Hopefully both of them, you know. It's a lot of cases at the Department of Justice at this point, and um, you know they really need to start giving us accountability uh, for the murders of our son. You're using deadly force as a first result. I don't understand why you have the tasers and the beanbag guns. We didn't waste our money for that. Taxpayers' money for that. I'm happy to be here today. I'm I'm so pleased with the outcome. You guys look wonderful out there. You look good. Yes. Y'all look good up there. Up on them hills. Y'all look good. Yes. Yeah. All right. If you don't take anything away from here today, please take this. Um, America needs some changing. It needs some cleaning up. You know, and if they don't clean it up, it's going to collapse. It's going to collapse. It's, it's, it's on its way to collapse very soon. Trust me. I've been reading. <laughs> and also, um, encourage, you know, white privileged Americans to get involved. You know, it, it starts with them because, you know, they it's almost like they got somewhat of a power. And if we can get to them, we can all come together. White privilege America, Black Lives Matter, all lives matter. We can come together and have some change across this nation. It's gonna take it's gonna take all of us to change this. <laughs> yes, please continue to um, support me and you know my fight for justice for Tamir and for all. I do want to say a few things about Tamir. Tamir was my baby. He was a baby. Yep. His his some of his shows was um what, what, what was it? The Big Red Dog, um, Clifford. Um, at twelve years old, that's what they do. They they watch cartoons. He like Curious George. He like um you know what is that? The Dragon Ball Z and. Um, um, you know, he's a kid. That's, that's what kids do. And at this point, you know, I'm just really, I was just really letting Tamir and Tajay come off the porch because I have always been a protector and very just shelter them. But, uh, you know, I can't watch everything. He's a kid, you know. I, that gun wasn't in my house. Uh, a friend of his gave it to him. You know what I'm saying? So I don't understand how they can decharacterize Tamir's character. He can never have caused his own death not in a million years not in at, at, at this point <laughs> at this point you're talking about purity he's he's a kid that's that's as pure as we gonna get no kids ain't gonna lie they always go tell the truth so we talk about purity and for his life to be robbed like that shame on america Um, he was also a kid that liked pizza and um, chips, um, Doritos. The blue bag was his favorite. <laughs> um, and um, he loved popsicles and ice cream. You know, just a kid, you know. Um, some of his favorite sports was basketball and football. Um, at 12 years old, he could swim in that 12, 12 deep end. Um, he could play video games. He was a great artist. Um, he had his whole life ahead of him um, and m much more. Um, very talented. Very talented. I was very anxious to see what he was going to become. Um, 
the potential to be anything. I'm, I'm just going to say that. He really had the potential. He was just joining the drums, playing the drums at Marion C. Seltzer when he went to school. Um, so he was just about to get on the drum team and, you know, do some, some acting in the school and a couple plays. So he was just developing, you know, at 12 years old. You know, they go through a lot, but, you know, he's still a kid, you know, at the end of the day. And his sister, Ty J, it was just like you wouldn't see one without the other. It was almost like having twins, even though they were two and a half years apart. You don't see one without the other. That's her best friend, her everything. Uh, you know, and, and, it, and I fight so hard because she was like, I don't know what I'm going to do now. That's, that's painful. That's piercing to my heart for my child to say she don't know what she's going to do without her brother. You know, my child, Tajay, um, in the beginning, she lost about 50 pounds. And, you know, I had to work with her. But she's doing much better these days. Much better. I just want to say, um, continue to support us in our fight for justice, all of the families that has lost their loved ones due to police brutality, law enforcement, National Guards. Please continue to support us and keep us lifted in prayer. I know due to my support around the nation, period, you guys have um, been supporting me. Um, that's really um, how I'm standing and covered in the blood of Jesus. I want to thank you guys for having me, and um, yes. you want to <laughs> I want to. I want to thank you guys for having me. It was a pleasure to be here, um, and I will continue to fight for justice for all and across America, starting with getting some of these laws changed. Thank you.